Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Four years ago on this channel, I discussed a problem that I had with a Google product, and that is their Google voice to text product that you find on Android phones. I often don't want to type into my phone. There are times where I am in my microscope. There are times when I'm busy. There are times when I just don't feel like typing or I'm not able to type because I'm doing something where my hands are busy, where voice to text is very, very useful. The problem that I've had with voice to text is that the only product that was available on Android phones was Google's voice to text product. And I mean, I don't think I need to tell my audience why it is that giving more and more data to Google is a problem. One of the issues that I had when I was using this product is I was not aware that it was saving every single audio recording that I made and transcribing it and saving it to my account forever. So in the year 2019, I was able to find voice recordings from 2010 and 2011 of me talking into my phone, which I went over in this video. Seven years ago, who said, comma, it's not your money, comma, but the person you had to be. That was an audio recording from about 12 years ago, and it was saved to my account. Easily searchable and transcribed completely so that somebody, if they hacked my account or there was a breach of Google's data center, they could literally see everything I had ever sent into my phone. I didn't know that they were saving that stuff forever. Now, many people said, well, Lewis, you agreed to that when you agreed to the terms of condition when you hit accept it on your Android phone. And th this is something that I refer to as EULA roofing, the end user license agreement, which is what you get every time you start up a new Windows computer, you start up a new Android phone, you start up a new iOS device. And it's it feels like EULA roofing. If you were telling the user up front, we are going to store every single thing you ever say, it's never going to be deleted. And it's going to be available with every audio file transcribed perfectly. So somebody could search through a database of everything that you've ever said in your private conversations into your phone. A lot of people would probably hit no, but because it's hidden in page 30 or 50 or 90, and it's coded in some weird legalese, most people don't even know that this is happening. And I find this to be a problem. And the bigger problem here is that there were really no alternatives if you wanted to have this type of feature and functionality other than Google's closed source software, which again, when it comes to data, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of rapey. So today I wanted to showcase a solution to this that we've come out with at the company that I work for. This is why this is marked as paid promotion. This is, I just want to make this clear. This is not marked as paid promotion because some douchebag sent me from some influencer marketing company, sent me an email offering me $300 to shill garbage to my audience. That's not how this channel ever works and it's not how it ever will. It's marked as paid promotion because I work for this company and I work for this company because I kind of believe in what they're doing. This organization is the organization that suggested I start a right to repair nonprofit and donated a million dollars to it, which was really, really cool. We have a fellowship program as well, where people who want to create open source software that are not going to sell out, that are not going to spy on people, no ads, no bullshit, uh, will be sponsored for creating freedom-loving software. And one of the fellowship applications that we had last quarter was for Linux caption software. This is a piece of software that does not connect to the internet that creates captions for whatever you have on your screen that's playing. You can have different audio inputs, and it literally just takes whatever is being played on your computer and turns it into an audio transcription. I found this piece of software very interesting. And I also talked to him about this video that I had done on Google's breaches of privacy, where they were saving every single thing I said into my phone for the past 10 years. And he came to us and presented us with this piece of software as a solution, which I'm really excited to present to all of you today. It is a voice to text keyboard that does, not only is it open source so that you can see everything it's doing, but it also does not require access to the internet in order to work, which allows you a much greater level of privacy than what you would get with Google's voice to text keyboard where without telling me they're again uploading everything to the internet and saving it forever. Now the new versions of Google's voice to text on the newer Pixel phones do allow you to use it even if you block access to the internet but there are two problems with this that I notice. A again you're still using Google's closed source software and trusting it with your data but more importantly B when you turn off its internet access, the voice to text turns into complete garbage. And I can demonstrate how that is on this Android device that I have in front of me. I actually broke mine, so I am using a coworker's Android device, so I'm a little lost compared to usual. So if you'll excuse me if I'm taking a bit to navigate around, I'm just going to show you the Google voice to text here. So here I am going to show you what it's like when I use Google's voice to text feature and I don't have access to the internet turned on. It does not put periods where periods should be in the sentence. It also puts periods in the wrong spot. If I pause, it doesn't know that a comma should go there. Now what I'd like to do 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the Futo Voice keyboard input works. So what we do is we go over to the Play Store over here, and you can find this piece of software in the Play Store. It's called Futo Voice Input. You click on here, and then you go Install. Unfortunately, I have Spectrum Internet, so we're, we're probably going to edit out the... Okay, now once you get the software, you'll notice that it prompts you that you, if you're using this default Google keyboard, it will not allow you to use this because Google's default keyboard doesn't allow you to use other voice input, unlike almost every other keyboard out there. So what you need to do is you need to enable a different keyboard. Now, you can use something like the Android open source keyboard over here. I have the Android open source keyboard installed, so I turn that on. I turn Gboard off, and I turn on Futo Voice Input Method over here. If you're using Graphene OS, Calyx OS, or Lineage OS, the stock keyboard should work fine with the Futo Voice app. If you're using the standard stock Android that comes with OnePlus or Samsung or any other Android phone, you'll likely have to install a different keyboard because Google's keyboard doesn't allow you to use any other voice input besides theirs. You can install something like OpenBoard or any soft keyboard, which I believe you can find on the F-Droid store. I prefer OpenBoard myself to the AnySoft keyboard because I like the layout a little better. Now, once you go to Fudo input method, all you have to do is give it permissions to your microphone. I actually prefer the slower language models, so I'm going to turn that on in a moment. We have a bunch of different languages that you could use over here, and I usually use the slower model because I like this one. I'm going to continue. I'm just going to download everything that's necessary for that to work, and I'm going to show you how that works once I go back here. So I'm going to go back to that Letters to Lewis channel, I'm going to talk into my phone. One thing you'll notice with this is that it doesn't type everything out as I'm speaking. However, it will automatically detect and place commas and periods and other punctuation where it needs to be placed once I'm done. Now, as you heard when I was speaking into my phone before, I had to speak very slowly. I also had to say the word comma. I had to say the word period. Let's see how this would handle that sentence that I said into Google 10 or 13 years ago. I dated a woman seven years ago who said, it's not your money, but the person you had to be to earn the money. Not only did it put a comma in a period where they belong, but it even actually understood that I was quoting somebody else and put quotation marks around the sentence. Before I was trying the slow language model, let's try it with the default language model, which is a little bit faster. I dated a woman seven years ago who said, it's not your money, but the person you had to be to earn the money. Okay, so this is a little bit faster, and I'm surprised that it still understood not just where to put the comma and the period, but also to put quotes around what she said. That was something I really only thought would have happened with the slower model. Now let's see how Google would handle that same situation. I dated a woman seven years ago who said it's not your money, but the person you had to be to earn the money. Okay, so it's close. It doesn't have the punctuation the same way that the Fudo keyboard does, and it also has woman's instead of woman. It's 99% as accurate, but more importantly, the one that's more accurate is the one that's not made by Google when you don't have internet access enabled. And more importantly, this one's open source. You can see exactly what it's doing. You can choose the language model that you want. And above all, you will never in a million years without keyboard open yourself up to this type of garbage happening to you. Nor will you ever open yourself up to something like that happening with, with any product that carries the Futo brand. Any product that carries the Futo brand respects your privacy, is going to be open source, so if you don't believe that we respect your privacy, don't trust us, look for yourself, is not gonna to advertise to you, is not gonna mine your data, is not gonna do any of this type of bullshit that is the way most modern companies, whether it is Meta or Google or anybody else operate nowadays, where they act as if they are entitled to your personal data because they're not. This software does not advertise to you. It does not track you. It collects no data on you whatsoever. Very specifically, we do not want any of our software collecting data or information on you like this garbage does over here. We want any software that we produce at this company to give you back control over your devices. That means it doesn't track you. That means it doesn't advertise to you. That means no bullshit whatsoever. That is what we are trying to push with the Fudo brand.
Now, this software is not free. This software does cost $10. Now, you may be wondering, uh, how does this work? How do we enforce that if it's open source? Uh, we ask you to pay. So inside the application itself, you can go to the payment menu if you have not paid, and there is a button to pay for the software via Google Play, and you can buy it this way if you would like to buy it this way. And if you have already paid for the software via other means, then there is an I already paid button. So our DRM here is essentially the honor system. Uh, we are going to have a pay button for you to pay to buy the software. And if you have already paid, then you can click I already paid. Now, what happens if you have not paid for the software, but you click I already paid? Well, that's between you and your God. In all seriousness, we are trying to change the culture behind open source software in general. One thing I notice is that a lot of people who create open source software uh, seem to be afraid to ask for money for it. They think money is kind of a dirty thing. We do pay a lot of money to develop these products and to make them better over time. And there are a team of people that are going to be working on these projects. So we do call it paid software. It is open source. You could literally strip out the payment page from this if you wanted to, compile that, and run it on your phone. And again, that's, that's between you and your God. We are really trying to, in every single way possible, demonstrate that we respect the user, we trust the user. The only way to have software that genuinely respects the user is if it is open source. And yeah, being open source, somebody could very, very easily not pay for the software and get it. But what we're trying to do is ask and figure out the answer to a basic question. If we create software that respects you, if we create software that doesn't do this fucking garbage of uploading all of your goddamn data after you LaRue you to somebody else's server, if we respect you, if we do not advertise to you, if we do not track you, if we create software that is good and we are open to listening to your criticisms and we are open to listening to your feature requests, are you open to making a one-time, not subscription, but a one-time payment of $10 for that software? Uh, that's about it for today's video. One thing that is really important to note is that this does require that you use something other than Google's keyboard in order to get the voice input. Any soft keyboard is a keyboard that many people have used that they like, and we are going to be coming out with our own keyboard at some point in time. Because while we do believe that our voice-to-text implementation here is actually better than Google's, as I demonstrated, uh, the autocorrect that you get on a lot of the open source keyboards for typing just isn't there yet. While I like the Android open source keyboard, Keyboard, and I like any soft keyboard and simple keyboard and all these others, the autocorrect that you get when typing into the Google keyboard is considerably better than everything else. And what we'd like to do is similarly to creating a voice product that is superior to Google's closed source product. In the near future, what we are working on right now is an open source keyboard that has superior autocorrect to Google's keyboard as well. So this way you can slowly get yourself out of the ecosystem of using Google products on your Android phone for voice input as well as text input and continue to have the same or higher quality of autocorrect than what you have when you use Google's product. That product is going to be a product that we will include and bundle with Google Voice. So when that comes out, you'll be able to again hit I already paid if you paid for this one. And again, if you didn't pay for this one and that one and you download both, no DRM. It's between you and your God. Do let me know if you have any questions, concerns, asks about this product. Again, I've been using this on my phone ever since the beta came out because um, I, I just, I don't, I don't trust these people with my data. Can I be honest with you? I just, I don't trust people that are going to atta attach every single thing that I've ever said in a searchable database to my account without explicitly informing me. If I was saving every single thing that you ever said in a searchable database, you would want to be informed of that in a very clear and explicit manner, not some BS that's hidden on page 30 of EULA and legalese. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.